Hi, welcome to the New York State Museum. I'm Fiona, and today I'd like to share with you a craft inspired by my new favorite animal, the North American porcupine. Now, the first thing I think of when I hear the word porcupine are their quills. There can be 30,000 quills on just one porcupine. So my friend here could have, or currently could have, 30,000 quills on him. Now, the quills are where you see the really light colors they kind of highlight against his darker brown fur. And these quills can also have dark brown, almost black spots near the tips. You can especially see them on his tail. Now quills are used to protect porcupines against predators. These could be wolves, gray horned owls, or even if they just feel threatened by an overly curious pet. Once an animal gets too close to a porcupine, it'll turn around so his back is facing the animal or the threat and quickly strike his tail against the creature, leaving behind several painful needle-like quills in the creature's face, body, that have to be plucked out. Now another interesting thing about porcupines are their teeth, especially their front incisors. They have two on the top and two on the bottom. Unfortunately, I don't have a porcupine tooth to show you today, but I do have a tooth similar to a porcupine tooth, and that's from a beaver. Beavers and porcupines are both rodents. They're the two largest rodents found in North America and their incisors never stop growing. So they're constantly gnawing on hard surfaces to keep their teeth filed down, which also makes sure that they're able to eat. If your teeth get too long, you can't eat. Now, if you look at the tooth that I have, I'm gonna flip it over so you can see all the different sides. It looks kind of weird because one surface is orange. This is the front of the tooth. We wouldn't think of orange teeth as being good. We certainly don't want our teeth to be orange. This is a layer of enamel, and it works as a protective layer to keep, prevent teeth from chipping or splitting or breaking since they have to scratch and gnaw on such hard surfaces all the time. Now I mentioned that they have to eat porcupines, right? So porcupines are herbivores, they eat plants. This could be um, leaves or buds or needles from trees, acorns. They'll also eat grasses and apples, they love apples. They're also very skilled climbers, often climbing up trees to find food. Though unfortunately, they do have the habit of falling out of trees if they go too far out on a branch looking for something yummy. And this sometimes causes them to prick themselves with their own quills. Now keeping those pesky quills in mind, I want to show you our craft today, which will be making paper porcupines using our own handprints. I have a couple of examples. You can use some different sizes. I have a small handprint. This one's my handprint. Or even get your whole household or family or some friends involved, and you can make them with all of your handprints. So I have a small child's handprint, and then in the back is a very large handprint. And put it all together to make one big porcupine. Some of the materials that you need for this craft include construction paper. I've picked out a bunch of brown and black and cream colors. You can use whatever colors you want or even just one color. You'll also need scissors, a black marker, something to trace your hand with, probably a pencil. I'm going to use a pen so it shows up on the video today. Some glue and googly eyes. So I'm going to get us started. I'm just going to move our big porcupine over. So for this craft, I found that around six or more handprints work out pretty well. But you can do as many as you want. You can have, you know, a tiny little three handprint porcupine. You can make a porcupine with 20 handprints. Oh, and I trace with a pencil instead of a pen. But You'll see once I start cutting it out. Okay. And if you want to make a porcupine smaller, like one of my examples, it can be a baby porcupine, especially if you use all black paper. 
when baby porcupines, or they're called porcupets, are born, they're all black, and then their quills will harden after an hour or so. And then they'll slowly get the coloring like their parents. I'm just going to do this one hand print for the video today instead of cutting out all six or seven. I have some pre-cut ones that I'm going to use. Okay, I'm just going to round out the bottom a bit. And there's a hand print. So a few more. And then we're going to place them one on top of each other, kind of alternating the colors a bit. So you can see all the different quills behind the other ones. See how you can still see the cream color poking through. glue them all together. I like using a glue stick for this part. I think it sticks it pretty well. One at a time. And you can always go back and glue up higher on the hand. Right now I'm just going to stick to the bottom of where our palm is. last layer. Just about there. Now, for our face of our porcupine, I cut out a little rectangle of paper. It's about two and a half inches by three, but you can always eye it. And this is going to act as our face. So if you slide in a corner of it, that's going to be his head. So before I do that, I like to just make a little cutout for his head. I'll use a pen this time. Kind of like a crescent moon or half of a small oval. Cut this out. This might be really thick because you have all that paper piled up, so you might need an older sibling or parent to help you. Gives him a little spot for his face. I think it's going to be just about there. Kind of blends in with my quill, but that's okay. And we can glue it down. Okay. Now, I have two different ways that you can draw his face. You can draw him from the side or as if you're looking up from above. So I think I'm going to do just one eye. I'm gonna draw them from the side today. And with googly eyes, I think the liquid glue or tacky glue works a bit better. Just need a little bit, we'll spread it around. And then with your marker, we're going to give them a nose. Porcupines don't have great eyesight, but they have an excellent sense of smell, so we want to make sure we give them a nose. He's got a big nose. <laughs> and then a smile. I think he's very happy to be in the forest eating apples. 
And there you have your porcupine. I hope you enjoyed this craft and I hope you come back to see more crafts. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Bye.